Hey everyone, Mackenzie here with Rhymer Tuning. Today, we're working on this Kubota SVL 75 and we're cranking up the horsepower. So grab your Reflash Master Kit and let's get into it. Welcome to the Kubota SVL 75 tuning tutorial. We're going to be using our Reflash Master handheld device to tune this SVL 75. This tutorial video will also be used for the SVL 65s, the 75s, and the 90 models, as well as the Takeuchi TL8s, 10s, and 12s. All the Kubota tractors Tier 4A will be also supported through the Reflash Master handheld device. For all of these applications, we offer a Stage 1 and a Stage 2 horsepower tune. A Stage 1 is a 10% increase above factory, a Stage 2 is a 20% above factory. For this SVL 75, we're doing the full Stage 2 20% horsepower tune on it. So, let's unbox the Reflash Master handheld device. Unboxing the Reflash Master device, the very first thing that you'll find on top is the actual handheld device itself. Directly above that, is a USB thumb drive. This has all the software that you're going to need to both read and write the machine. Below that is the Kubota specific cable. This is how you plug into the diagnostic port and the handheld device. Below that is the USB cord. This is how you connect the handheld device to the computer. Now let's grab your Windows PC and we'll install the thumb drive. As soon as you plug in the USB thumb drive, this window will open and we're going to install the Reflash Master Client software. Simply double click. Select English and click Next. And then click Next again. You will have to accept the terms of the license agreement and click next. And it'll create a Reflash Master file, click next. And then click install. As soon as the install has been complete, you can click finish. And it will perform an update automatically. Now, this update can take a couple of minutes. So what we're gonna do while we're waiting is grab our Reflash Master handheld device and the USB cable because we're going to need it next. Now, to complete the update, plug in the Reflash Master handheld device using the USB cable. Now click retry on the computer screen to move to the next part of the update. Now, if you don't get the prompt to plug in your handheld device, that's totally okay. Not all applications require this step. Once the loading bar finishes, you'll have a prompt that says update complete. Simply click okay and it'll close the program. For these Kubota skid steer applications, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket as well as an extension and a ratchet. This will allow you to gain access to the diagnostic port. Now that the handheld device has been updated, let's grab the Reflash Master, the Kubota cable, and your tools, and head into the SVL 75. Now that we're in the cab of the Kubota SVL 75, we're gonna to wanna to put the Reflash Master off to the side. Using the 10 millimeter socket, we're going to have to gain access to the diagnostic port. It's located by your right elbow under the cup holder. The first screw is located right beside the control panel. This is why we require the extension. Now that the first screw has been removed, let's go ahead and remove the second one. It's located at the top of the cup holder. For the final screw, we will have to remove the extension as the bolt is located directly behind the seat. Now that we've removed the three bolts out of the cup holder, we can actually remove this piece of trim out all together and this will give us access to the diagnostic port. 
The next step is to locate the diagnostic port. You'll notice that there is a CAN bus resistor plugged into the diagnostic port. Simply remove it. Now that the resistor has been removed, the diagnostic port has been revealed. This is where we'll be plugging in the Reflash Master handheld device. So just to do a really quick recap, we've removed the cup holder and we have unplugged the CAN bus resistor from the diagnostic port. Now we're ready to plug in the Kubota cable into the handheld device and into the skid steer itself. Now, it's important to note that this diagnostic port doesn't have power until the key is actually turned on. So go ahead and put the skid steer to the on position. Once the handheld device has power, you'll see the main menu. You're going to want to select work by selecting the green check mark. It'll automatically identify the protocol as Kubota construction. Press select. We're going to select skid steer, so press the down arrow and then press select. We'll have to scroll down to SVL 75, press the down arrow and then press select. You're going to want to switch on the dashboard which we've already done because the diagnostic port needs power. So press select. It is currently identifying the ECU. It's important to note that we cannot switch off the dash when taking a read from the SVL75. That is because the diagnostic port is supplying power to the handheld device. When this prompt comes up on the screen, simply press select. This is the screen that confirms that you have identified the protocol. Press select. Now you'll see on the screen, identification. We're going to want to select reading. Press the green check mark. Again, it is going to ask to switch on the dash. The dash has already been turned on because we need power to the handheld device. Simply press select. The handheld device is going to identify the ECU again. This is when the communication process begins. It is now reading the ECU. This is going to take a couple of minutes. You're going to notice that there is a red exclamation mark that starts flashing on the dash. This indicates that the ECU is being communicated with, with the handheld device. There may also be a code of E026. This is also an indicator that the handheld device is communicating with the ECM. When the prompt on the screen says to switch off the dashboard, simply select OK. You'll be notified that the ECM reading has been completed, select OK. You'll notice that the screen says analyzing login progress. This is the final step of reading the ECU. Once it's back to the main menu, you can now turn off the ignition and you're now ready to download the read file. From here, the next step is to download the MyG file from the Reflash Master. So let's head back to your PC and plug in the handheld device. Now that you're back at your computer, we're going to plug in the handheld device. It's really important that we remove the diagnostic port connector first and then plug it in using the USB connector. Now that the Reflash Master is plugged into the computer, you're going to want to open up the Reflash Master client software. You're going to notice that it's initializing communication with the handheld device. This takes all but a couple of moments. You can see that the download from Reflash Master button is now highlighted. Click on it and you'll have a second window that opens. You can click the next button and then you get to select where the file will be located. We recommend that you put it to your desktop. Select next. It'll ask you to confirm, press the confirm button. Once you see the MyG file on your desktop, you can click close. We ask that you rename the file, starting with your order number, 
and then my G file. Add this file as an attachment when you send it to us via email. Here's an example of what it would look like to send us the file. You're going to want to send it to sales at rhymertuning.com. The subject line is going to be your order number. And then you're going to want to attach files. Go to the file folder that you chose to save your MyG file at and add it as an attachment. From there, you're good to send it off to us. Once you've sent us your MyG file, it typically takes between two to three hours before you receive your mod file back. Once you've received that file, simply download it and have it ready to go on your desktop. On the desktop, you can see that we've received the mod file. We're going to go back into the Reflash Master client software and click Upload to Reflash Master. It's going to prompt you to make sure that your Reflash Master is connected. Simply click the Next button. You'll have a search bar. You're going to click the three dots on the right-hand side of the browser box. Click the Desktop and then double-click on the mod file. It'll take a moment just to verify the file and then you can click the next button. Click the confirm and the file's been added to the handheld device. Once you're prompted saying that the procedure has been completed successfully, just click the close button. Once it's initialized communication again, you'll be good to disconnect the handheld device. Now that the mod file has been installed on the handheld device, we can grab that and the diagnostic cable and head back to the Kubota SVL75. Now that we're back in the Kubota SVL75, we're going to plug the Reflash Master back into the diagnostic port. From here, you're going to have to turn on the key again. That way the diagnostic port will power the Reflash Master. Now that the handheld device has power, main menu is going to pop up again we're going to select work. Under protocol, the next step is writing. We're going to select stage two tuning and press okay. The handheld device will prompt you to switch on the dashboard. Just press okay. It is now identifying the ECU. This can take a couple of moments. We now have the loading bar for the writing file. The skid steer will beep and you may see error code 026 and the flashing red exclamation mark. This tells you that the ECM is being communicated with through the handheld device. The identification is the last step of the writing process. You'll then be prompted that the writing of the ECM has been completed. Press OK. Once you're back to the main menu, you know that the writing of the ECM has been completed. Your mod file has now been installed. Now that this ECM has been reflashed, we can go ahead and turn off the key and disconnect it from the diagnostic port. Now, before we can take this skid steer back out, there are two more things that we have to do. We need to reinstall that CAN bus resistor and then put this cup holder back in place. And just like that guys, this Kubota SVL75 now has 90 horsepower and is ready to be the workhorse that it was designed to be. So let's go outside and give it a really quick QC.